This is a full review of the Smart EQ42 facelift. We'll tell you all about what's new, exterior, interior and the driving experience. And of course, we'll also focus on the question, Smart as a brand, now only electric? Is that actually a good choice? Why are they doing that? And how does it differ then from driving the petrol versions? So please now join Jonas behind the camera, Thomas in front of the camera, here on Autogo Fuel, your number one resource for in-depth car reviews and your number one community to discuss cars. And of course, as always, in full HD, full screen and full length. Let's go. In the front you can see it does look sportier than before. What have they changed? First of all, the logo is gone. It's just a smart lettering here now. Then new optional LED lamps. There's, so there's not only the LED daytime running light, but also the real headlamp unit can be purchased now with full LED. That's indeed a little bit better to be a little bit more visible also inside the city. And this new bigger lower front grille with the honeycomb structure, that indeed is the I would say the sportiest feature and of course some more color and trim and so on. I think why not for a facelift? Indeed the face is, has been lifted and looks quite nice and quite sporty. Of course there are different colors available. We also picked up some other colors in the intro and also now here for you. Tiny 2 meters 69 or 106 inches is the Smart 4 2 and it's probably the only car where a length description begins with two meters something. Well, even three meters something would be short. You know what? That's of course even shorter here. You can see the one and a half box design of this smart generation. And side profile is relatively untouched. There are some new wheels, the 15 or 16 inch. Those ones are the bigger 16 inch. And you can see here with the new design that looks somehow electric, so to say. Then the EQ badge, EQ then the um, Mercedes electric brand, so to say. This one here is also the convertible with the fabric top. There are also different colors available for this fabric top. And of course you can still get the coupe. So, but you know, I always say, take the convertible, enjoy open top driving. It's of course a little bit more expensive, yes. And also the electric version is more expensive than the petrol one. It will be evened out, so to say, when you have some governmental tax benefits and so on. That's, of course, then depending on the country. And soon we'll also get into the electric details. Let's finish up the rear. In the rear, the convertible and the closed version are, of course, a little bit different because you have the fabric split opening here where it would have all the way glass in the coupe. What's new now here with the facelift are those rear lamps. They are now in this LED style and look more modern, pretty fancy. So, yeah, why not? What do you think? So smart globally, electric only now because Daimler wants to bring down their fleet CO2 emission levels and it does make sense to sell all the small, let's say cheaper vehicles, all electric, so you can at the same time sell the bigger cars still and the AMGs and so on and still, you know, keep a decent CO2 fleet consumption. Yeah, <laughs> that's the strategy. But the EQ, the electric model, also has a lot of advantages especially going to talk about that during the driving part. The battery still is at 17.6 kilowatt hours. That's the gross value, so the net value, of course, a little bit lower. And 110 kilometers or 70 miles range, that is like, you know, guaranteed in different conditions as well. You can also score some more decent figures if you have, like, you know, temperatures like those and 
maybe not using the AC and not so much electric consumers and so on and you drive reasonably. So, and now about the charging. It's right down here at the right side of the vehicle. Right here, there's an AC charger. Either comes down with 4.6 kilowatt or optional the 22 kilowatt charger. That is of course recommended if you're using charging stations and so on. 80 horsepower by the way, and about 12 seconds to one kilometers or 62 miles an hour. But of course, it's more useful in the city with lower speed. And the battery by the way, eight years warranty or 1,000 kilometers. That means 62 thousand miles of warranty for that battery that is placed in the bottom of the car that's you know towards the rear there and it's actually quite agile vehicle especially you know of this very very short wheelbase this typical go-kart feeling luggage surprise for you so Here we go, and you can stack it up like this if you play a little bit Tetris and you could even put more things on top here well that's possible <laughs> and let's remove that so I can show you um, because one of the things that a true smart owner does first when you have the convertible you have this so two backpacks two trolleys that works you have this here you know <laughs> this is like the um, you no know, like a um, like a cover and usually this one is placed in this middle part right there then you can like use this cover there but I just pushed it all over the place and usually this one goes first and it stays in your you know basement like for your whole life because then you're just more flexible it would have not fitted when we mounted this one wouldn't have worked with all the luggage and in this way convertible and coupe are not really different by the way the you know normal Petra engine would sit here below that one and there, of course, in the electric version, all the electric parts are sitting. And this is actually also better with the electric version because in the petrol engine, this can get quite hot if you think about groceries in summer and so on and so on. And this is here, by the way, the place where you would store the side bars of the convertible. So what about the convertible? Step one would be just this. And the good thing is you can also close or open it at higher speeds and you're just a little bit more flexible. Is it a rear convertible? Well, kind of yes and no at the same time. This is here the second step. You can only do that if you haven't stacked up all the luggage there in the rear. The good thing is when you have it in this step two, it is better because you have less wind noise and also less wind turbulence in the interior so I would recommend driving this one down all the time again if you have stacked up all the luggage in the rear then you would need you know to be in the first step right there and you also need to be in this you know in this step here when we remove the side bars here completely subscribers know why we use this one here because there's the cargo harbor just behind us and it's actually pretty loud here but you won't hear that due to this <laughs> therefore i also tried one handed here now with the sidebar and you see that even works jonas has already demounted the other one actually with holding the camera in the one hand and then with the other hand the sidebar there and yeah and then you have a real convertible then you can store it also in the rear well you can also store it in your basement or so on but if you want to carry it with you then of course you can start also here in the rear of the car and well maybe this works even with one hand so if you are a little bit practiced with that like this the key is L and R so the left side up right there so you just have to pick the right side and that's it and then the other one fits right there and this is a little bit higher then so it, you do lose a little bit of trunk space then but yeah it's maybe not the best solution overall mm, you won't do that as a smart customer all the time but i mean why not oh some doggies coming here hey <laughs> have some guests on stage right there always nice so what do you think about the cars guys <laughs> not interested at the moment and as a comparison here the trunk of the coupe it's the other way around with the convertible you first open the lower hatch and then the upper one here first the upper one then the lower one and with the upper one you can already grab over right here like for you know if you just want to put something in out very quickly other than that you 
do it like this. And then you have an additional storage where you would store the convertible roof bars. And this is the normal trunk. And here again, what I told you with the convertible, this one where you can put some luggage in here or like some small things. And then you can also hide your luggage like this. Um, but again, this costs so much storage here in length that it doesn't make sense at all. So again, um, you would just remove it. In this case, I'll, um, I'll just push it to behind the seats or something. And yeah, it will be gone in your basement garage or in your cellar, well, you know, whatever. It will be gone and you will never see it again as a smart customer. Then here in length is 58 centimeters. If you have removed that to the seats and the width right here is actually almost a meter and that's almost the same than in let's say normal other cars and the height right here is also not too bad is 65 centimeters approximately that's actually pretty cool so you can really stack things up of course here with the coupe a little bit easier but the convertible again is just limited because you have like you know those structures of the roof at the side but rather when the roof is down when the roof is up then there's not so much difference. And some more variety for you. This one here, the Coupe, you can see the pillar here is a little bit thicker than with the convertible, so it doesn't make too much of a design difference actually, but a little bit. Very nice wheels here in this case, by the way. This is like 90s BBS style. Love that. Yeah, that's what I grew up with. <laughs> then in beige, we also have this car here, or you can also say gold maybe. Would that one be something for you? By the way, you can see also here the fitting interior for that. So there's beige on the exterior and there's also some beige interior decor elements done. So yeah, I mean, it's I mean, quite a nice idea. Then we got an edition one here in gray. We will also drive this one here as a coupe in our full review. Very nice matte gray. Edition one has black wheels done. In this case, those Brabos wheels. Pretty interesting. I think it works very well design-wise. You can also see how the coupe looks like in the rear. Then here with the glass window. That looks a little bit cleaner than with the convertible, actually. Red accentuation in this in this, uh, in this edition one. Yeah, fancy racing style. Then this was here our convertible with the red. There again, you can see the difference right here. Of course, you can also remove the top pillars. Yes, the coupe looks a little bit better but again, the convertible is somehow cooler because you can open it. In silver, especially looks good when it's bright, again with those BBS style wheels. And I think, yeah, this one is closed at the moment as well, but here actually pretty cool because here on the inside, we have some wood decor. That's pretty cool, that's also new. So why not? And last but not least, of course, there are even more colors available, but we have another white one for you. Well, the white ones are quite often bought also, especially as a coupe, um, you know, by some, you know, service providers, for example, and they have a, like a whole fleet of that, for example. So the private cars are usually a little bit more colorful then, and indeed Smart is very often a private car. That's also a difference to one of the, you know, one of the bigger cars and so on, which are quite often also business cars. So which one would be your color here for today? And the tail lamps at night here, you can see one, two, three. Why didn't they put the fourth element as well as the tail lamps like this with the LED? Hmm, because this one here is left for the turning indicator. But we've seen other cars where you could have made it red and then just yellow when this one is flashing. So, hmm, I think not that symmetrical. This is here the daytime running light, then the main headlamp unit. So two LEDs are active, and then when I put the high beam, the third one is also. Just some slight changes for the interior. So door all the same, nice fabric choices right there. Then some 
you know, some storage right here with a net. And it's also the same steering wheel. Left side you control the screen and also the standard cruise control, but non-adaptive. And round vents. This is an extra meter you can you can get here for the battery status and also for the power. And this one at the moment animal skin seating, but there are also nice fabric choices as base one available. There's a seat heating here and in the electric version here is automatically connected to the heated steering wheel because it's more efficient to heat up the body directly than just do it via air. So maybe you don't need so much air heating then. Yeah, <laughs> that's interesting, right? Then there are also some more decor elements. For example, we have some carbon fiber decor here now, just, you know, around the dashboard. And then there's also the mighty new cup holders, but we'll take another perspective to check out that new middle console instruments you can see here either analog or digital you can check out both or then of course have some more functions right there and also the energy consumption figure for example right here so like this and the steering wheel itself by the way you can put that up and down but not in reach so that's a little bit limiting then but you'll be also just fine as a tall person, there's no problem. And then it gets a little bit more interesting because of the facelift. There's a new infotainment system. We'll soon show that in the demonstration. And then in the lower part, this is the same here with the climate unit. So I also put on the car, you can see something of it. That's the way it works. And here with the magnifying glass, that's a little bit, yeah, <laughs> funny. And then in the lower middle console, there's this new cover for the cup holders. You can slide it open. Then you have this typical Mercedes cup holder. We also know it from the C-Class, for example. And you can either use it for bottles or you can also use it as a smartphone storage right there already. But it's good because so far everything was flying all around the place. And then here in the very front, there's this new USB hub right there with two USB supplies. And then aux in and this will also serve then for the smartphone connection with the Apple CarPlay. That's definitely very helpful. Well, and what's new? Apple CarPlay or Android Auto on this 8-inch touchscreen. So you plug it in with the cable and this is a demonstration of how it's going to be looking live because the final version is not live yet. But that's how the integration of Apple CarPlay will look like. The normal GPS so far available in the media system will not be available anymore. You will just navigate then via Apple CarPlay or Android Auto. And well, the only thing, the advantage of the so far GPS was that you don't use any data from your smartphone. Well, it might be critical if you have, you know, like you know, not a very good or uh, sophisticated contract or something. For all others, it will be better that way, definitely, because the GPS so far was not of the best quality software-wise. So, of course, the Apple CarPlay or Android Auto Maps are way better for the navigation overall. So, when you have the new facelift version with the USB hub in the front, there's no single USB hub in the rear anymore. And seating position, by the way, well, there are, of course, more comfortable cars out there. And the fabric seats are also more comfortable because they're a little bit softer as for the surface. So always go for those, also just for practical reasons. But other than that, tall people have no problem with that. And they're also close to roof now, just to show you the headroom. Um, this is not much difference than Kobe and convertible. And there's still enough headroom here with 1 meter 86 or 6 foot 1. Those are the new fabric seats I've been talking about. So the base version will just remain with black fabric seats as we know them. And this one is the new fabric seat here with the honeycomb structure and also white contrast stitches and so on. And this one here will come with the pulse and the passion trim level. So not with the base trim level, but then with those two others. And they're really very beautiful, so more attractive than before. And again, with those contour stitches and so on, looks a little bit more modern, a little bit more upmarket, a little bit more sophisticated. And by the way, those new fabric seats are really very comfortable. They are more comfortable than before. So whereas those honeycomb structures, when they are on slick animal skin surfaces with contrast stitches, then they reduce the comfort, but in this case here on the fabric, they seem to increase the comfort somehow. It, it just, you know, it somehow feels good, you know. So, um, really surprisingly um, interesting. So, they seem to give you a little bit more comfort than the basic fabric seats. Maybe it won't be the world, 
but just a little bit. So that's definitely very interesting. And by the way, as for the infotainment system, so there's still the radio, the base radio system, also in the facelift. And when you then pick the optional new infotainment system, that one then will come standard with Apple CarPlay and Android Auto. Welcome to Thomas' Driving Lounge with the Smart EQ 42 or Smart 42 EQ, whatever, convertible. And we start here, quite unusually, on, on the motorway because I want to tell you something about that. First of all, yeah, road noise and so on, not the best in this car. So it's definitely getting quite loud on the motorway. That's how it is, not prim primarily meant to be that way. But um, it is quite stable on the motorway, actually, because the suspension is quite stiff. So that's not a problem. But what is a problem? That you are being ignored and bullied all the time. And that's really a pity. And experience that in different countries. So people are not letting you in um, when you change the lane or something. They're really, you know, driving very close to your, to your back of the car. And yeah, that's really a pity that this, I mean, it's a little bit like, like survival of the fittest on the motorway and that's you know that shouldn't be the case should it you know so just can um, um, you know shout out please you know more respect for drivers of small cars so not everyone you know, has like a super huge SUV or something so yeah that's definitely a pity but besides that I mean you can also drive it on the motorway yes again the higher in speed you go the less you will have a good noise insulation so that's the thing you have to bear in mind then when you get to some traffic situations of course this is where the car is more at home once again because then you can sneak in here and there and something even if some people tend to you know or try to ignore you <laughs> then you may be a little bit faster when you by the way keep it cruise control and like 70 80 kilometers an hour it shows me at the moment 130 kilometers of range that would be actually quite decent with a uh, um, consumption of here at the moment 11 kilowatt hours and 100 kilometers but that's not really realistic when you're driving it in the city which is like you know the, the normal use case and that would always be like more 110 kilometers or 70 miles of range and again when some people now say like that's not enough well yes and no because it is enough when you just use it in the city and when you just recharge it overnight and so on, then it won't be a problem. When you have longer motorway hauls, then it's not you know, the, the proper car for you anyway. But since we're now not on the motorway anymore, let's open that roof. That's of course so beautiful with picking the convertible version. The wind noises will be better when I have it in the second stage. I cannot do that at the moment because we have all our luggage in the, in the back. But if you don't have everything packed with luggage, but just in the center of the vehicle, then actually it is less wind noise to drive with one stage more down. However, in the way it is at the moment, I can still see through the rear window. So that's an advantage with this first step. But again, when you look at my hairs, well, they're not moving too much, but I can tell you there's less you know, wind coming in the car when it's down. It's just you know, because the flow of wind is being changed. And of course, you could also demount those side um, those sidebars right there if you like um, not so many smart owners do that because it always takes some effort you have to store them in the back and so on then luggage is being reduced and you also drive it when it's cold and so on and then you all like, start a switch back and forth so not so many people do that but when you do that for like a special occasion it's definitely a lot of fun and um, you know here stuff like this like from standstill switching to another lane where you see like, ah, oh, you know, that's a little bit more empty in that lane, or maybe even this one. This is where this car is born to, oh, there's the previous generation. Oh, that almost got a flat tire in the front. There you can see now um, this one here with the one and a half box design, the previous generation with the one box design. Here, of course, a little bit more passenger safety, crash safety, and of course, packaging, packaging wise and so on. And so you can understand why they, went a step further and indeed you know sometimes you don't feel that safe in that vehicle because of people bullying you because you have a small car 
Yet again, this is among the safest small cars there is. There are even crash tests where they hit it together with the Mercedes S-Class. And this Tridion cell all around the vehicle is actually still quite safe. So that's definitely good to know. Well, driving it electric is of course awesome because it's silent as for the drivetrain and you have this instantaneous acceleration. And even though when you have the automatic with the new generation, especially when you're going uphill or something, it starts to stutter a little bit more. It's not this um, weird automatic gearbox as in the first generation, on the second generation, but you know, here it's just flawless. You know, there's no second gear or third gear or something, it's just all the way flawless in the acceleration. And indeed, the driving experience with the electric smart is definitely better than with any other petrol version more silent yet again it's it's more powerful we can also engage that engage anyone of you seen the first episode of this uh, new Picard series i haven't but i'm uh, gonna try something of that um so we will do like the uh, engage very soon and i just hit the throttle and let's see how that goes the official figure it's about 12 seconds to 100 kilometers or 60 miles an hour, but that's not the point of this vehicle. It's more like zero to like 50 kilometers or something, you know, or like zero to 30 miles. That's where this car is really fast because hardly any weight and still with an electric drive, 80 horsepower, that's more than enough. And you will see when I really hit the throttle now, um, it's really very, very effective. Let's go. Plop, that's already 55 and see uh, everyone behind us is gone. So that's more like Porsche-like acceleration, zero to 50 kilometers an hour. That works pretty good. So, and that's also really fun when driving it in the city. You can almost drive it like a small motorcycle or something from the traffic light to the next traffic light and so on. This is usually in the normal driving mode. You also have this eco driving mode. And what this does is that when you lift the throttle, there's more recuperation because when you are in the normal driving mode and you lift the throttle, the car is rather rolling, which would be more efficient overall when you try to roll as, you know, as long as possible. So rolling is more efficient than recuperating all the time unless you really want to reduce speed. Then of course recuperation is better and you can do that either with hitting the brakes, then first of all recuperation is being done then if you need some more then also the real brakes are being used or when you are in this eco mode then there's more recuperation so when i leave the throttle now the speed is being reduced a little bit more than when we would just go in a normal mode and yeah i mean why not i think i would probably leave it in eco mode because yes rolling is more efficient overall theoretically but when you're driving it in the city where this car belongs and pretty rough from a rear axle you know when going off some bumps they have to make suspension so stiff so the car doesn't flip over you know um, oh, I have to go all the way to the right which won't be possible now well so didn't really pay attention to the GPS by the way this again here with the old version of the GPS still we're driving the car with the old version of the GPS that's why you still see the old GPS in this map here at the moment so back to this uh, recuperation so usually when you are in the city and you leave the throttle you want to somehow reduce the speed and in the moment before you hit the brake pedal the car is already decelerating a little bit and i think that's quite useful and then for example in situations like those i don't have to step on the brake i can stay with my foot like over the throttle but just leave it a little bit and then it's also like somewhat in one one pedal um, driving not necessarily like in a you know, like in other electric vehicles, because the recuperation is not that strong. But you know, still quite okay. And you know, what I really wonder is that the projection here for the for the range is actually indeed higher than usual. You know, we had like one or two years ago, I had this car in the long-term driving test also, where I really had this one or ten kilometers or 60, um, 70 miles range figured out. I'm not sure I'm, if they did some like efficiency stuff now, so maybe it's a little bit better. But again, it depends on at the moment 16 degrees. 
Celsius outside, that's perfect temperature for the battery actually. So we also don't have the AC on, don't have the seat heating on special by the way, I told you earlier, when I put the seat heating on right here, I also have the steering wheel heating. That's for the electric version only. Well, since there's only the electric version left, that's standard now, because they say it's more efficient to heat your hands than actually to heat the whole, whole air. Yeah. I mean, why not? So I love heat steering wheels. Some don't, but well, I do. So really a lot of fun to drive it here in the city and, you know, when you're on the motorway, you sometimes think, like, ah, I couldn't have a bigger car, that's really annoying. Then you approach the city and get along very well. You're not so stressed because, oh, does that fit on the left? Does it fit on the right? Is that really now, is that enough space for me? Here, everything will fit, it's no problem. And you make your own parking spots with that one here. So. Um, even like a Volkswagen Up, Seat Me, Toyota Igo or something size, that one won't fit in most of the spots where this one does fit in. So, like, just like this one is like this much or something, and even this makes a huge difference. So, there are so many parking spots you can actually take with this car, where you can cannot do it with any other car. So, if you ask me if there's any difference here, pre-facelift, post-facelift, well, the range figure seems to be a little bit higher now. I'm going to talk, about, um, going to, talk to, um, to the engineers about that once more. Um, but other than that, of course, the driving feeling is the same. They didn't change anything suspension-wise and so on. And it's still this very generation of this very smart. So they're not investing too much money anymore in this very project here. Um, you know that they're also um, you know, this doesn't belong to 100% to Diamond now anymore. The you know, Chinese company also hopped in with a big share in, 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 in Smart. So obviously, you know, the main goal for Daimler with this car here at the moment is, well, to make it all electric so you can actually better your CO2 fleet consumption. You know, there would have been demand for petrol cars of the Smart still. Yes, definitely. But they want to make the small cars all EV then the fleet, whole fleet consumption goes down on fleet CO2 emissions, and then they can keep on selling all the big AMG cars where they earn so much money with. That's the strategy. Yeah, again, it's all about money because they would need like those, you know, strong fees to pay for that. Well, being in a tunnel with the converter was not the most pleasant thing, <laughs> so I have to raise my voice here a little bit. But again, a very pleasant ride here with the smart, not a super comfortable ride, I mean, we do sit upright, Jonas and I, we are both quite tall. So for tall people, the Smart is not a problem because you have the rather upright seating position. We also have a lot of luggage in there. Just enjoying every bit of riding here with the open top. That's always so cool. And then you're also a little bit more relaxed when you're once again stuck in traffic. And again, I can just stress, it's fast, it's silent. The EQ version is definitely the way to go. Yes, there are probably a lot of people who still don't have like proper charging infrastructure. There you can only buy used smart now. And I mean, but when you have like the proper charging infrastructure at home, especially at home, or like a good you know, public charging station close by or something, then the EQ is the best choice anyway. And you know, thinking about some governmental benefits and so on. And, well, so far, I mean, some motorway and now city driving with using recuperation. We had astonishing 11 kilowatt hours and 100 kilometers of the energy consumption. So that will be decent. Now it's even showing me like 150 kilometers of range. So, I mean, that might really be the very good temperature, not using any of the electric consumers and so on. That could be a factor. Um, it really depends, you know, but like the, the figures I, I gave you earlier, those were other ones you can definitely trust on that you always have, you know, and I think that's really the very important thing about the electric vehicles. You need to know the range you will always have, no matter of the condi conditions and so on. But as you see, when you drive it really in a gentle way and here everything was rather straight also in the city, 
then you can even score some better range figures and I mean there was 150 kilometers now that would be like 100 miles plus so I think that's that's in this case also pretty decent so that's one of the surprises today at least from this very test ride yay some city course and we'll compare now the coupe well it doesn't make a big difference in driving i can already tell you so far but we'll still go into details of that and this is also something you know with light cars and hammering the brakes so you can also take a better look at pedestrians and brake a little bit harder so again easy on speed once more and this one here being the edition one you cannot get this matte gray paint from normal color uh, model line but you can get those black bravos wheels and so far you could think oh wait a minute isn't that like the sports bravos package no because now in the eq version you cannot get the sport suspension anymore and i think that's a good thing so because the suspension is stiff enough for this car, the base one also, then when you go for 16 inch wheels, it's also a little bit stiffer, right? So if you want more comfort, stick with the 15 inch wheels, don't go for the 16 inch. And you don't need the sport suspension, it's just too stiff Then we have been testing the Brabus and the pre facelift and the petrol engine, but the EQ, since the weight is also a little bit higher, will just get this one base suspension and that's also just fine, you know, there's no like much leaning to the left and the right with this vehicle so it's absolutely fine I think also a good decision so yes you can get those black wheels but not the matte gray color that's I think a pity because I think um, more people would go for that even you know besides the, uh, the the edition one but maybe they introduce it at a later stage or something here we're getting pretty cool it is a little bit more silent in the coupe yes um, but again I would drive with open top with the um, convertible already, so <laughs> that's maybe also the reason why it would be louder. And here, this is so cool. You sneak in some, um, you know, free spots while driving and also uh, while parking. And just recently, I was driving with the Peugeot 208, which is also a small car, and we were like passing like five different parking spots where it didn't fit in with that one. But then, oh. The smart would have fit in there and there and there and there and there five times you know so that's where you make your own parking spots um, once again that's pretty cool here with the eco mode again i lift the throttle then we have some e-recuperation i would have wished maybe that there would also be a mode with even you know stronger recuperation that definitely would have been quite cool but here in the city the car is so much at home and on the one hand other cars give you more riding comfort from suspension and maybe also like from the from the whole position and so on on the other hand this car yeah like this you know car waits for us just a little bit you hammer the throttle and then it's really cool to have this instantaneous electric acceleration that really helps it's so much easier to ease this car around in the city when it's all electric especially if you think about Roma so in Rome so <laughs> should maybe wear a little bit less fur you know <laughs> so especially when you drive this car in rome which is like the main smart city so where most smarts are being driven city-wise um, then it will help you even more first of all it reduced the um, local pollution definitely and you'll also just you know quicker especially like with the typical Italian traffic <laughs> which can be a lot of fun sometimes and yeah sometimes not definitely depends on so especially in Valencia or also if you think about Barcelona where you also have some narrow streets then you just feel at home in this vehicle and I have to say it is a little bit cozier in the coupe yes uh, when it's closed you're comparing closed coupe and closed convertible we also have this panoramic roof here that's why we also have the better camera mount position right there that's of course a um, nice view and so on so with the panoramic roof which uh, with the manual shade you can get some light in here but yet again most of the time because it's like an all-season convertible you drive with open top with the convertible even if it's cold in, in winter times and so on 
and here this is just like a perfect city course once again for the smart not sure it's like huh it was red that was green yeah sometimes a little bit confusing also the traffic in valencia but definitely a beautiful city and uh nice temperature especially here like this area here usually have very nice temperatures recently it was like a pretty rare storm but that's probably also climate change and something um yeah so this small car could be something um you know which you also like react to the recent um developments um the future for small cars is actually unclear and the reason for that is so in most situations where you would say I would use like a very tiny car. Nowadays, you would probably use like a ride sharing or something. You know? Think about you, yeah, you're on holiday in New York. Would you rent a smart or would you just take an Uber or a Lyft? Because you find no parking spots at all, even with the smart, or would have to pay lots of money for that. Um, and it's just easier not to have the car and just to be dropped off somewhere and then you would rather use ride sharing than a small car. And if you need like a bigger car, then you also have like a usage that you drive along the way and so on. Yeah, but that's um, that's very interesting development, definitely a car market. And also the manufacturers, they cannot make so much money with those very small cars. The margin, the, the, the win margin is just so much lower. So it also doesn't pay off for the manufacturers to build those small cars. Then again, those small startups could hop in where they maybe use some existing EV platforms and then build their own cars, like, you know, like those um, Scion by the, um, I guess the Sono Motor startup. Um, we'll have to see about that. Here, especially those narrow streets, that's where the smart cars are really feeding at home and even more in the electric way. And we're also creating less noise, of course. It's quite early now still less noise for all the pedestrians around here and so on it's like this market hall here we've been here in those exact streets like five years ago i think that was you know pretty cool so you should scroll back to this review maybe if you're interested it's still this generation was the convertible but pre-facelift this is so much fun you know instantaneous ev acceleration again but this one is not properly with the GPS. Not sure over there. Yeah. We're following a nice uh, city route here, but yeah, sometimes it doesn't work. I'm driving without the AC, by the way, at the moment, and Jonas and I, we seem to be like quite hot guys. Yeah. Are we? Yeah, we are. <laughs> so you see here, moist is building up a little bit, so I have to turn on the heating just a little bit, or let's say just some ventilation, and then it will be gone properly. So, um, yeah, that's the thing about when you have like this very low range, you start doing stuff like this, you know, like deactivating the heating, deactivating the AC and so on, because heating especially takes a lot of range away, especially when you have this kind of small battery. Yeah. So like very interesting impressions here also with the Coupe, nice to compare it. Um, yeah, a little bit cozier, definitely when it's closed, a little bit more silent as well. You also have like special spot here for your glasses that's not available in the in the convertible. Uh, yeah, then again, you know what my choice would be. I don't know what the GPS is telling us now, but we'll find our way. And if we have to take a little detour, I mean, in the morning here, it's not so much traffic. And again, so much fun to ease this car around here in the Valencia traffic. And now to our conclusion for today. And you know, two very important rules here, Thomas car rules are A, there is no food inside the car. And when you have a car that is available as coupe and convertible, you have to buy the convertible. <laughs> well, that also counts for the Smart EQ42. So I would always go for the convertible because it just delivers you this open top feeling. But now, what were the central questions for today? First of all, driving the all electric version it was there before, yes, now only electric and it is a pity for those who have to go a little bit longer as for the whole commuting ways and you know, for everyone who doesn't have the infrastructure yet for charging. Hmm, that's a pity indeed. But the driving experience is definitely better with the electric version. It's just more fun to drive, it's more silent, yet more powerful 
it's really cool and if you have the fitting infrastructure it's the best thing you can do actually well they haven't changed the battery size or something but we could score a better fuel economy well energy economy today it might be in the good weather conditions for example here in valencia today so that might have been one of the reasons it doesn't have a big battery and doesn't have high range or something but it is all about the infrastructure again and if you use it primarily in the city where it's meant to drive uh, meant to be driven then it's also no problem if the range is not that high well exterior wise they did some tweaks here and there i think it looks a little bit sportier than before maybe as a base version now as it looked before with the amg or with this so was where the bravos like spot was with bravos yeah like before with the bravos um package um <laughs> yeah amg bravos yeah there was quite some competition in the past but now meanwhile bravos still independent and AMG, of course, belonging to Mercedes for a couple of while now. Then on the interior, not so much has changed there. New infotainment system, which we could see in the demonstration. And, well, those cup holders, well, just minor changes, but those cup holders are actually quite good, especially also the place where you can now put your smartphone in. That's a little bit better than before because so far it was flying all over the place. So they haven't invested too much in this face lift. The tweaks that I have done are actually quite nice and I hope you also enjoyed this episode here today. Please leave us your comments and see you next time.